this is Stephen from EDR Modesto. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can set up a DEM collision model in ANSYS Fluent. So the kind of simulation this is, is where you're interested in relatively large particles, uh, high volume fractions, and we want to see the interaction of those particles as they're colliding with each other and the, the surfaces in, in the model. Um, so this capability is built into Fluent. Uh, one of the reasons that I wanted to record this video is that actually a lot of people don't know that it's got that capability and also it can be a little tricky setting this up the first time you've done it so i'm just going to quickly go through the basic setups and uh, highlight the things that you need to need to think about so i'm inside fluent i've got my uh, model here and in this case although you can run dem coupled with the fluid equations uh, quite often when you're doing particle simulations, you might only be interested in, in um, how the particles interact and there might be a weak coupling with the flow equation. So I can simply go to the solution tab, uh, equations, and in this case, I've switched off the flow equation. So I'm only interested in the particles. Um, because of that, uh, if we look at the, the mesh on it, um, because we're not solving for flow equations in, in this case, then the mesh really only needs to be refined uh, sufficiently to capture the, the geometry here, so the curvature in other words. Uh, we don't need to refine it too much because we're not actually solving for flow. Okay, so we'll go straight into the, uh, the DPM panel. So I'm up in physics here, discrete phase. And to activate the uh, DEM collision model, you go into the physical models tab here and you simply check the box there, DEM collision. Now, once you've done that, um, you have to create some injections uh, and there are some additional considerations. You see, we've got this DEM collisions button here um, and up here we've got uh, unsteady particle tracking. So I'll go through these things um, one by one. So if I click on injections, Okay, you can see I've got a number of injections created here. So let's select one of them and see what I've done. Um, the types of injections are the same as regular DPM, uh, but obviously in a, a DEM case, then things like atomizers don't really make much sense. We wouldn't be using those. So typically single group or, or surface is what you'd be using. Um, I've set up a group of five injections. So I'm injecting five particles. And if we go down here to the point properties, uh, you can see I've set up the, um, the geometry of this group. Okay, so it's basically, I'm effectively setting up a rake uh, across this model. Um, you've got your initial velocities, angular velocities, and so on, all of these set to zero. Now down here, um, this, this is where you need to uh, give this a little bit of consideration. Obviously you put in your diameter uh, but if you look at my start time and stop time, I've put in a, a very, very small stop time. Okay, so what, what I'm trying to do here is to uh, ensure the particles are effectively injected instantaneously right at the start of the simulation. So I just set that to a very low value uh, to make it completely independent of the, uh, the fluid flow time step. Now, as a consequence of that, you, if you look at the flow rate, what I've got to do, I've got to work that out such that I get exactly five particles um, injected. Now, the reason that's important is that ordinarily in DPM, uh, we, we don't actually inject particles. We inject something called parcels, okay? And each parcel might represent hundreds or, or even thousands of very, very small uh, particles. In DEM modeling, um, it's a little different. We're, we're not really interested in, in that. We want to inject um, single uh, individual particles and, and see the interaction. So I've just got to work out the flow rate to ensure that, uh, that uh, I actually get five um, particles injected. So in other words, there's one particle per parcel. So you just need to, you just need to work that out based upon the size of your particle, based upon the material, uh, that will give you the flow rate that's, uh, that's necessary. Now I've actually, uh, in this case, I've created a number of injections. Uh, so let's look at the second one. And uh, I've, I've simply had them injected into the domain at uh, different times. And, and again, you can see I've got a start time there 
and that uh, very, very low uh, increment stop time. And this one is a different diameter, so again, I've had to work out the, uh, the flow rate. And this one is only three streams, okay, so it's just a case of working this out. Um, but you can equally use uh, different types of injections, so surface or, uh, or, or anything that, that, that you prefer. Okay, so let's go back to the DPM panel here. Um, let's have a look at the particle treatment up here. So um, it's, it's a transient simulation by nature. Uh, so we've selected unsteady particle tracking and we're going to inject the particles um, at a different time step to the fluid flow. Uh, now in this case, I'm not actually solving flow equations, but the, the flow solver is still going to run because that's going to rotate this, uh, this domain. So if I go over to cell zone conditions here, uh, we can just see that I've set up um, a, uh, a rotational mesh motion. So I'll enable this. Okay, and I can just fill this in, set a uh, rotational velocity and, uh, and so on. Um, now, typically the particle time step size is much, much smaller than the, uh, the fluid flow time step size. Okay, so if I go to solution, I've got a time step size here, which is actually um, an order of magnitude lower um, sorry, greater than the time step size for the, the, the particle uh, step size here. Um, generally, that's the case. The particle time step size should be much smaller. Now, there is guidance in the, in the documentation. So if I go into the theory manual here, okay, you'll see uh, just down here, there's uh, an expression here, a simple equation, which gives you the collision time scale. So... Uh, and this is typically for the smallest particles. So if you, if you put in the numbers there, uh, that'll give you a typical time scale. And as a rule of thumb, if you divide that by 20, then that should give you a reasonable time step to start with. You may have to do some sensitization there, but that's, that's the guidance for you. Okay, so let's go back to uh, Fluent. We've got our particle time step size uh, set there. Um, in the solution, we've got a time step size set there. That's really just based upon uh, the, the, the motion of this, um, th this rotating domain. Okay, once that's uh, set up, then we can go to the DEM collisions panel here. So I'm just going to open that up. And um, I've already set my materials up. So the, the default solid material here is aluminium. And uh, the default particle material is, is, is anthracite. So um, these collision partners will, will appear depending on what materials you've got set up. So I'm just going to select one of them, click set. Okay, and this gives you all of the possible interactions. So we've got aluminium to aluminium and aluminium to the DEM anthracite. And if I click one of those, uh, what you've got to do is you've got to specify contact force laws. Uh, so this dictates how the particles um, collide with each other, how they, um, they, they bounce off each other. Uh, there's, there's a number of different laws here that you can choose. I've chosen spring dash pot uh, for normal and for tan tangential DSHF rolling. Okay, um, you do have to fill in these, uh, these variables here. Um, a lot of them are, are book figures. Uh, you may need to tweak some of these. Probably the most important one... Um, for spring dash pot is the uh, the K uh, value here. Um, and again, if you go into the documentation, it does give you guidance as to how you can estimate uh, a reasonable value for that. So you can put in your numbers depending upon your, um, your particle diameter, mass density, and so on. And that will give you a, a spring constant that you can enter into Fluent. Now, if we go back to Fluent, you'll see that it's got another uh, another collision pair there, so aluminium against anthracite. So that dictates how these particles are going to behave when they uh, they encounter a wall of the domain. Okay, so again, you have to specify the laws here and the uh, the coefficients. And if we go back, we've got another collision partner there uh, for the anthracite. And I go to set. And it's the same thing again. So it's just. Uh, you know, what happens when a DEM anthracite particle hits aluminium, you go through the same thing. Specify your contact force laws, 
specify your variables. And there's the other collision pair there, which is anthracite versus anthracite. So this is when particles are uh, impacting each other. Okay, so once you've got that set up, uh, you're almost ready to run the simulation. Um, there are some, uh, some additional considerations here. Uh, if I go to injections again, uh, let's just select one of these. Um, if you go to physical models here, uh, you can see we've got particle rotation. That's been introduced. Um, so you got uh, you can put in rotational drag laws and just uh, account for the physics of particles rotating. So if you want to do that, uh, just make sure that you check that box. Okay, so before we run the simulation, a couple of other points. Um, when you go into the boundary conditions and when you select a wall boundary, okay, so I'm just going to bring up the... Uh, boundary conditions for the wall. Uh, if I head over to DPM, um, you can see that we've got this additional option here. So we've got DEM collision partner. Uh, so what you've got to do is you've just got to select the appropriate um, collision partner. So you're telling it, okay, what happens when a particle hits this boundary? Uh, so I'm going to select DEM anthracite. So that's the, uh, that just tells it um, how a particle is going to respond when it hits that boundary and you can just click apply and uh, and close that out. So uh, before we run our simulation, lastly, uh, you're going to want typically to produce an animation of this so you can see what's happening. Um, and just a few words on that. The first thing that we've got to do is create a particle track. So just as you would do with a regular uh, DPM model. Um, I'm coloring by particle variables diameter. Uh, as you can see, I've selected all of my injections. And uh, what's quite important here is the track style. Okay, so I've specified it to be a sphere. And if you, you've got to go into attributes here. And uh, for the diameter, I've selected variable auto range with a scale of one. And I'm sizing it by the diameter. So that's important because then what you actually see is physically correct. Okay, so the, the diameters are the actual diameters that, that, that they should be. You've also got a, a detail variable here, um, and uh, actually the default value of that is quite low. Uh, so it just means that the spheres as they're rendered are uh, a fairly sort of rough. You can increase that number and it just, um, uh, gives you a, a higher resolution, makes the spheres look a little bit more realistic. So you, you can experiment with that. I've set that to 10 in this case. Okay, so um, we're ready to go here. Um, I've created a scene and I've uh, created a solution animation. Um, now what I'd recommend that you do uh, when you start running these is to actually just run one time step, okay? So I'm just going to do that now. Okay. And you see that it's injected five particles, um, which is what I wanted it to do. But if I scroll back in the TUI here, it gives you the total mass that was injected. So what you should do just as sense check is uh, to work out, well, what's the total mass of these five particles? and it should equal this number here. And that tells you that um, each one of these parcels that it's injected contains one particle. And that, that's really what we want for a, uh, a DEM calculation. Okay, so once we're happy with that, we can, uh, we can just carry on with the calculation, run it for as many time steps as you need. And the resultant will be a simulation like this. Okay, so that was a quick introduction into activating and using the DEM collision model influence. Um, I hope uh, you found this useful uh, if you're interested in, in modeling DEM uh, solutions. If you want to go further uh, and look at more advanced DEM modeling, then I would suggest that you take a look at ANSYS Rocky. 
um, which is a dedicated uh, demo solver. But you're, if, if you're an existing Fluent user with an interest in this, then this is a, it's a really great place to start to, to get you started in basic dev modeling. So um, I do hope you uh, find this useful in, in your work. Thanks for watching this video and bye for now.